Oh, right. Morning. Race Monkey back again. Uh, next stage of the, uh, the GT6 uh, restoration. Uh, we're on carburetor at uh, this time. And what we're going to do today is uh, at least start the rebuild of one of the the two carbs that are fitted to the to the GT6. Um, Zenith CD 150 and on this model with it being the uh, emissions model it's the 150 it's a CD 150 ES model which has got the emission uh, set up on it and uh, we're going to rebuild it uh, with the full overall kit not just a service kit uh, opted for the full overall kit because um, I just think after 40 years of operation it probably justifies it, doesn't it? Like, you know, I've bought the kit direct from Zenith in the uh, UK. Um, comes in the, the box, you know. Packet of all these bits here. And plastics and, and uh, diaphragms and, and, and all gaskets necessary. Um, there's a couple of things in there that we've got to, you know, sort of take care of to make sure we get set up properly. Did need an overhaul kit and for £100 for the full kit, um, I think it's probably a good idea. There's one thing I did find. There's uh, when we get into the carb, there's a, a needle adjusting uh, adjuster in there. Has a little O-ring in there and a little star washer. And they didn't come with the kit. Uh, and I think it's a mistake because I phoned them back and I said, you know, I can't find it. It clearly states it there and it's not in the bag. So they promised to send it uh, to me straight away. Uh, they did say um, tomorrow. <laughs> whether it'll arrive tomorrow I'll let you know but you know they picked their hands up straight away and just said oh probably it's obviously just a simple mistake uh, it's been it's just been missed off so we'll 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 address the problem straight away so you know if it gets here tomorrow then not a great deal of harm done in our particular case being hobby guys but you know you'd, you'd hope that for a hundred pound they make sure it was all correct wouldn't you but you know that's for them to sort out in it but anyway let's start uh, taking it all apart and uh, and see what we're up against um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get you all focused in. I'm operating off the uh, off the bench here. Nice job here, sat down. You can't beat that, can you? So I'll put it back on the bench. I'm going to set the camera up and we'll go close in. See what we're doing. They do come apart fairly easy, these things. It's nothing to get uh, overly uh, concerned about. And I've used a couple of the old bits as, as ways of refurbing the new bits, which I'll show as we go. Uh, take it apart logically, we're going to take the dashboard off first, this top piece, you can unscrew that, take it out and shake it in there, all it is in there is a little damper, it's made up of a shaft, and two brass components there, one's got a little chamfer on it there, and this is all basic oil, oil control, damper control if you like, oil and damper control, let's get it right, of the piston travelling up and down, uh, so we can take that off, that's Basically, basically nothing whatsoever to concern ourselves about. So get the screwdriver out, we'll have all these screws out. We should just pop back in. Now some of these screws can be quite tight on the grounds that they've been there for 40 years in this particular case. But you do get a full set of these top screws together. But I wouldn't go abusing them personally because you never know, <laughs> you never do know uh, whether they're going to come in. I mean, one thing I always do, whether I'm not going to do it now because I've got the screws out, but if I've got a screw in here and it's really, really tight, little hammer, and we're talking little tacking hammer there, just a quick bang on top, and nine times out of ten, it'll break it. If that hasn't done it, because they're quite thick, you can get a little small mole grips on there, just give them a tweak. If they're not coming out, you know, without trying to strip all the the uh, Phillips, I think they're Phillips those, um, screws. But, you know, worst case scenario happens, don't worry, we've still got four in the kit. So that's those off. So we'll take the dash bar first to reveal a body. A bit grubby inside, but we'll be cleaning it up on the, well, I'll be using the blaster on this. Uh, which is something that... If you haven't got, don't worry about it, just make sure you've, you've got everything cleaned up with a, uh, a nice cleaner, solvent. Be careful with using wire wheels because this is only aluminium. Uh, I personally wouldn't use the wire wheel to do it. Um, 
if you haven't got a blaster I would just be considering using a, a solvent cleaner to get everything nicely. I'm going to try and polish these dash pots up on, on, on mine uh, because uh, because I want to, no other reason. Um, and we'll see if I can get it. It's going to be a problem doing it because you've got this section here that the wheels won't polish into the corners. But we'll see how it goes. But I'll give it a whirl and I'll show you what I've done after. Uh, dash pot off, little spring, and it's one of those like uh, I think it's one of those things there that you can keep doing that with, and 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 it keeps wobbling about like that for ages. And I think that's one of those things that I could really sit and amuse myself with. But as we haven't got time, we've got to get on with this job. All that is is a very soft return spring to push the piston back down. See, when that comes up, when the on full throttle, this starts to lift. And when we take the uh, foot off the accelerator again, that spring there is to push it back. No, it's a very light spring. Don't get tempted to pull it apart thinking I'll give it a bit more strength, you know, to push it back down. Don't need it. You know, it's, it's there, it's a, it's a progressive spring, you know, it's, it's it, it does a very light job and it only needs to be a lightweight spring. So resist the temptation to go, we'll give that some more. Um, not the thing to do. That's what we're taking out next. Diaphragm, got four screws there. Uh, I'll tell you what we can do. We can get these screws out while we're at it. Now be careful with these because these won't come out quite as easy on that particular thing there, it's come out easy enough and I will tell you something else uh, and I'll say it twice, when, once when we're stripping it, once when we're rebuilding it I would uh, always will say as well, make sure you've got a good screwdriver for doing something this like this you know, don't try and use um, you know, a posi drive when it's a Phillips or a Phillips when it's a posi drive, something like that because you know these things. Uh, when you've rounded them off and damaged them, we can you can make the whole job a real pain to do. You know. Uh, again, down. Just gently operating it that way. Come on now. And when we've got those screws out there, I'll take this cover off. On a little aluminium disc to hold it down. When you take it out, if you look at the top of there, I'll just check we can get this on the on the uh, on the camera. Where are we now? There we go. Now I can all see that little piece there. Now if you look on your diaphragm, we've got another one there, look. You see? Now my finger is roughly there. Obviously that's quite plain to see, those two locate and it's easy to do, just find out where it is, drop it in that hole and that's where it goes back. I'll repeat that message when we put it back together because it is important. These are very delicate, these of have, uh, have what, you know, uh, a common failure on, uh, common is, is wrong really, these are a failure item on the Stromberg carbs, a lot of people don't like them because of it. Uh, when they start getting a little hole in them, pinholes, all the rest of it, when they get old, these are pretty good, you know. I will save these. I don't know why, but I will, because there's a chance they see you can, you know, repair a carburetor, temporary repair, using one of these old ones, if one of these new ones ever let go. Uh, and these are pretty good, but when they do fail, you know, it causes a lot of uh, uneven running problems. A lot of it's uneven running. It causes a number of problems. I say we'll call it carburetor problems. You know, one of the first things to check is to make sure your diaphragms have not got loads of holes in them. And they do in time start to you know deteriorate. Um, uh, let's put it this way. The only thing that we got down side of there now is this needle. Now this is in a again another piece of uh, like a brass tank material. Don't go chucking it about over the workshop. If you drop it and bend it, your car brass will never work again. And what it's got in this side here is a little brass screw. And remember, brass screw means it's not very strong. So when we tighten it up, we tighten it up very, very carefully. And when we come to undo it, we'll loosen it carefully. Now, if you look at, take it out, it's shaped thus. And all that then, that's, that's the, the part that locks into a groove, the um, actual bleed screw adjuster. At the moment I'm just using an Allen key. There is a proper tool for this um, 
the slot which you use to adjust the carbs when you're finished. I haven't got one of them. Uh, I'm looking into making one or making something or even just buying one because they're not overly expensive. Um, if you run one of these cars and you've got these carburetors then I think it's probably worth investing in one. Um, these can be can be stiff but they've got to come out. Now this will go uh, it goes either way, but they can put knock it going that way, or it can come out that way. At the moment, because it's stiff, the other one was uh, was reasonably slack. Uh, but what we've got, what, what the issue we've got now is we have got to be very, very careful with what we're doing because uh, this is the parts. These are the ultra precision parts, if you like, of the carburetors. These are things that get damaged fundamentally, they've got to be replaced with new or a new carburetor. If you actually read the, the company manufactured uh, um, data, doubling down here to try and get them out. It'd be nice if this was just pulled down like the other one does, but it, it's not doing it easily. And I can't stress enough, we don't get to the levels of forcing this because it's it's not something we can we can force. If we can get this star washer down the bottom to turn, there's no easy way of doing this. I've seen a number of people try do it the easy way, but I don't think I don't think there is one. I'm sure the factory might have come up with something. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to come up with an idea of trying to get this uh, thing out here. It will go in that way, or it will come out this way. I'm just the other one came out quite easily so I'm going to have to come up with a little idea of how I'm going to get this out it's going to be simple because that's brass so we're going to have to use some form of uh, soft material so give me a minute I'll pause the, the vid right well these like I say they're not tight but they're tighter than what you can just like give abuse to if you like so what I've done this is an old butterfly, this is the old butterfly shaft off the previous carburetor. It's a piece of brass, soft brass. And all they've done is got it on the on the lip there. I hope you can see okay where we've gone down there. So you'll see that the actual uh, the needle, uh, can we say it's needle uh, holder, spring loaded body, call it what you like, uh, is uh, a little bit proud of the, the top of there. So we've ground this down to uh, what's it? We've tapped it down a little bit, and as soon as I touched it, it started to go. So, no abuse there. I'm happy that, you know, we've not done any harm here. And all I'm going to do now is knock it down to that side there. And out she goes. She's going down there. And we've knocked it down. And that's all we've got. Didn't really take much, that. But again, you see, because it's all it's, com it's precision components, you know, you've really got to emphasise how careful it be. You know, this old shaft here, we just ground it down. It's, it's scrap, it's no use to me. Uh, I wouldn't save something like that, apart from the fact that I'll cut a piece of the brass off just in case I need it for a bit of an, en an engineering job. And all we've done is gone onto that edge there, just give it a quick tap, and it just went bum bum bum. It was, it was fairly simple, more involved. Uh, I thought it was less involved than what I thought it was, so let's get back to, uh, let's come back out again a bit more so we can share the moment. And that was that, so you know, up she came, so we've got one little needle there, and you'll see where that locates down in the bottom there, up and down into, into can you see how it goes from here? That's all that in there, and that's fundamentally what is metering the uh, the fuel. Nice and that it just controls the amount of fuel coming up here through the float chamber. Simplified, of course, but fundamentally that's what happens. Now, I choose not to do anything with these other than wipe them off. Uh, you could, or you could polish them with a bit of brasso or something like that. So, fundamentally, that's that little piston, we've removed that, so we've got to get out the little star and the, uh, the star washer, as it's always referred to. And again, this is where this little came back in. I've gone back in there, down the centre of the hole there. So the reason we're using this is it's, it's, it's brass. 
into it, it's, uh, it might just push out. And there you go. Out she came. You see that little bit of trickery there. That is what you're adjusting when you're putting your Melanchy. When you're putting that special tool down to your car better on the dash pot from the top, that locates in the top of there. Allen key. Obviously we're turning. That's got a thread underneath. And the back of there, and that thread's actually straight into that needle there. And this is actually on a shoulder. This uh, unit. Oop, won't drop it. It's a little bit dirty that is, that one's cleaning. Yeah, well that's fundamentally what it screws into, so you kind of get my point. And put that over there, Max, then. That thread in there is, is a little dirty, it's not going in nice and free. Well, they want it nice and free, because when you're adjusting it, you want it nice and free. Although the special tool does adapt, is adapted to uh, sort of, you know, support you with that uh, particular task. Again, that's all we're looking at now. Just a piston. There, just obviously once putting in the to be cleaned up pile. So fundamentally, we've got all the piston gear out of there already. Dash pot off. Spring out. You know, spring removed. Diaphragm removed. Piston removed. Needle removed. Um, Fundamentally, that's the top bit, the, 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 you know, the bit that starts falling about. Uh, what we're going to do now is I think I am going to see if that will come off easy enough. And there's a reason I'm doing that. And the only reason I'm going to do that is because it will get in the way a little bit. There you go. It'll get in the way a slight bit of, uh, of when you're basically standing it up. Let's put that to one side and for good measure I'll paint that and clean it up. It looks like it's like a copper, a copper screw. You see that very professional, so you am using it now pretty well. Stand it up with a flat surface there, that's the only reason. Uh, where shall we move on to now? Uh, last part, I'll tell you what, let's use a fairly simple while we've got this screwdriver inside us. We're moving out the uh, Uh, temperature compensator as they call it. Now what they do recommend is you don't undo these two screws here to take this plastic piece off here. They say it's best off left as it is as a unit. There's not an awful lot in there to, uh, to overhaul, repair. So you know if it doesn't need taking apart for any reason that's not taken apart. Because I don't think you'll get it back together working in a correct way, but I could be wrong on that. But uh, it is recommended, there's nothing in there really to worry about, just, just take it off. Um, and underneath there we've got some seals that we need to take care of. Put them back over there. Two screws there, and this fundamentally just pulls out. And if you look on the top there, we have an O-ring on this, as you can see, how the state of this particular O-ring is uh, knackered. You know, that goes into the completely knackered pile. <laughs> um, now inside there, there's like a little shuttle, which is spring-loaded, and sort of when you, obviously when you're working it, it goes up and down, it's, it's locking into a, creating a seal if you like on that uh, compensator, so it has a role in life and I think that's got to run nice and free, which that is doing at the moment, but we'll be still doing a little bit of clean up on that later on, uh, on there, so you see, you know, parts are coming apart on this thing, oh sorry, let's just take that one out as well, down at the bottom of there, there is another little o-ring, so don't forget, on your temperature con compensator, we've got two, uh, seals. We've got one at the base of there, which in the, in the body of the carb there is a flat surface, and one that goes around the outside. So it's, it's clearly uh, meant not to get uh, 
air drawn into the carburetor because that goes straight into the body. Now if that was them seals were leaking you would be getting air going into the carb that you actually don't want. Uh, you know creating carburation problems. Uh, to do, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the float bowl off now because that's the big bits you can see. Um, these are I don't envision them to be overly tight. Uh, and that obviously clearly wasn't. Is that tight? Yes. So it takes a little soft screwdriver. Don't get beefy with it. You can soon take it apart. It's all the gunge inside of there. I have seen them a lot worse, I will say, over the years. Uh, this is a little cap on there which has got a seal in it. And that simply, I want to say simply, just pulls out. See, it just pulls out on the bottom and you can see that's all gummed up. That wouldn't leak. Uh, sorry, that wouldn't seal much, would it, in there? All the gummy is, whatever it is. So, all's that, that's basically all it. Gasket, obviously we're renewing the gasket. That needs a thorough clean out. We don't want any particles of any kind in there. Any particles of crap that is, you know. And there we go. Float chamber and floats. That's all they are. Um, can, they, can they crack what's dropping out of it? Unbelievable amount of crap you get in these things. Unbelievable. Um, Again, I have seen them worse. Not often, but I have. Now, what I'm going to do here is not, not that you need to, because it's dead obvious the way it goes in. Is I'm going to mark that. Right. T for top. And a small L for left. <laughs> that makes it top left. When we build it now, it'll only go in one way, because it's actually got a pin in here. To stop it going any other way. See so what I'm doing there? Just getting a screwdriver underneath and just flicking it up out of that spring mountings there. And that's all it is. Simple pin. Pin comes out. Stick that back down there. Whatever, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Now on these particular carbs or any carb in general, this little unit here, needle valve here, can be the cause of many of woes with carburation. Uh, by sticking. That one isn't, that's quite free. The other one was actually stuck. And when that sticks, especially if it sticks in the up position, all it does is allow fuel to just keep getting pumped and pumped in and we end up with a flooded carburetor, fuel everywhere and uh, you wish you wish you'd wish uh, you not got out of bed that morning because you've got to take it all out. Uh, that's simple how that comes out. If I can, if I can only remember if I'm where you put your spanner. Simple half inch spanner. You can't get the ring end on it because it gets jammed all up in there. <laughs> you, you, you can actually, but I see how loose it is. It's really scary. Now what they want to try and do is get this so we can support it. And there you go. Doesn't take an awful lot. 13 millimeter this one is, but it's you know it's a half inch AF because you really should be talking AF because these are quite old carburetors. And as you can see, one little washer. The back of there, aluminium. You can always save them because I mean you get one in your kit. But them aluminium washers there, they can be reused uh, a number of occasions. You can simply anneal them again. See that one's dirty, but you know it's actually a bit flaking. I mean I don't think that'll probably seal that well, to be honest with you. But we get one of them in the kit, so we can put that away. So look what we've got now. Fundamentally, we've got the end of all these bits which is full, as you can see, it's full of grime, there's dirt all over my cloth here, what's well, all come out of the float chamber uh, and it's every single piece of that um, has got to be removed every single piece, I've, uh, we don't want any contamination whatsoever in there so we've got to be very careful how we go about cleaning it all out uh, and that we've got now is this little jet here uh, which is uh, the main now all that is, is pressed in. Now there's a little bit of something you must remember on these things before you, you, before you get tempted to try and remove it. If you look down inside, let me, let me make a point of this and then on the camera there. As we look down inside, there, okay that's lower than the body. If you look at the body there, 
that, that brass section there, the main jet itself, is actually lower than, than what this aluminium body is here. Right? Now you want to know how, how, how far down that is. You know, it's, it's below the surface, so it's, it's not just there for, you know, uh, because that's just where that particular guy who built it up knocked it down to. It actually is a, it is a setting. Um, I spoke to Zenith about it and they say their guys take about 100 thou below the top of there. That's their figures. Now this is a factory one. I doubt very much this has ever had a service kit fitted in by looking at the state of the carburetor. So I'll get that set onto thou there and all I'm going to do is put my depth gauge in and we're going to measure it. Onto that. See we put we've, you can see what we're kind of doing there. We put in the depth gauge, there's a shoulder and then there's a, a, a base, a central base. Well, I'm going to put it on that central base and then I'm going to try and do it. I hope you can see that it's just a bit awkward when you've only got two hands and you're not working in a vice. To then put your gauge down as accurate as you can and then we've got a 102. They recommend 100 thou, 102, 2 thou any different. That could be just a little bit of shite on top there if you know what I mean. Uh, aim for 100, if it was 101, 102, you know, it's thereabouts. What you've got to do is maintain that you've only got a limited amount of adjustment on your needle. So that thing there, the height of there, will be relevant to your adjustment you're making. So if you set that too far out, you'll never get the correct adjustment back whilst adjusting your carburetor. Uh, certainly the idle rich section of it, you know, the, the bit where it's on idle and you're trying to get the mixture set up for an idle mix for the idle, correct idle and correct CO2 reading at idle. Um, so you want to be, you know, as accurate as you can, but if I, if I said you got a hundred thou and it when you come and the best you could get to was a hundred and one and a bit, I would worry about that. Ninety-nine, I wouldn't worry about that. If I was a hundred and ten out uh, down, I'd be concerned. So you know that's the figure that's stated. I've seen on a couple of chat rooms that they weren't quite sure how it is. Thank you for me. You know, work at a hundred thou, it's um, it's about, uh, well, it, it's the correct, and 100 thou, you know, I can never do the metric uh, conversions on these, but you can do it on the, uh, on your, what's it, so now if I just convert this to millimetres, it's 2.55 millimetres of depth, so 2.5, I'd say 2.5, or 100, 100 thou, 2.5 mil, 100 thou, depends on where you come from, you, you, you prefer to work it. And that's where you're basically aiming for. Now, how we get that out, it's only a pressed in thing. Is this the old bit? Yes. Do we need to be really careful with it? Not really careful, but just careful enough. 